Hey guys, I am back on Madden. As you guys know, the NBA hosts a playoff tournament every single year, and using my intelligent brain, I have decided to mix the typical imperialism video with a March Madness twist on it. I spent a ton of time making this, so if you could, leave a like and subscribe if you guys do enjoy, and as always, enjoy the video. Okay guys, before the video continues, I do just want to say, if I do mention March Madness throughout the videos, that's because originally it was supposed to be a March Madness video, but I had a lot going on in my personal life, so I wasn't able to finish the video in time, so I decided that I would have to do the NBA style instead, because I just, I ran out of time, and it would have been way too late, and it just would have been outdated, so... With that being said, if you guys aren't subscribed, make sure you guys hit the subscribe button because I put a lot of effort into this. Like I said, it should have been out longer, like a long time ago, and I apologize for that. But I did have a lot going on, and there's just not much else I could do. I do apologize, but I hope you guys do enjoy this video, and let's get it. Make sure you guys do hit that subscribe button, though, because I am almost halfway to my goal of 1,000 subscribers. And like I said, make sure you guys do enjoy this video. I put a lot of effort into it, almost like 20 hours of effort. So... Like I said, please hit that subscribe button and enjoy the video. All right, guys. So the very first thing I am going to point out is the fact that I did add power-ups into this imperialism video. So basically, let me explain it to you real quick. If a team lands on the power-up, they land on the empty state, they automatically get that certain award. But we're going to get this started and we're going to spin the wheel right away. The wheel is going to land on the Los Angeles Rams. Okay, so the very first team is the Rams. I just mentioned the power-ups, and the Rams do have a chance of getting a power-up if they go straight north, but if they go to the right, they can also take out the Cardinals and go for the Chargers. They can really go pretty much anywhere except for south or southeast, or southwest, I mean. But let's spin this arrow. Let's see what it's going to land on. The arrow is going to be pointing to the east, and they are going to play the Arizona Cardinals. So the very first match of Peerless video is going to be the Los Angeles Rams heading into Arizona. So, as you guys can see, the Arizona Cardinals are obviously the underdogs in this at the 25th seed, with the Rams being the 9th seed. But let's see how this game goes out. The Cardinals are actually winning with a minute 40 seconds left. A minute 20 seconds left now, and Goff has the ball. The Rams do have the ball. He's going to throw an incomplete pass. They are down by 3. They need a touchdown here. Goff has 2 interceptions, which is not good, but they do have Gurley. I don't know why they're running. Maybe it's just because Gurley is so good. I don't know what that animation was. We're just going to ignore that, I guess. But the Rams here have now... The Rams now have a minute left in the game to try and at least tie it and bring it to overtime. They're going to hand off to Gurley again, who is going to be stopped almost right away on third and five. They, I don't, why'd they, I mean, I guess they're going for it. So maybe they're just trying to pick up a few yards. It didn't work. Fourth and six, definitely going to pass here now, I would imagine. Actually, they're not. They're going to hand off to Gurley, who's going to be stuffed right at the line. And the Arizona Cardinals are going to get the very first upset of the video. The 25th seed takes out the number nine seed in the first game. All right, as you guys know, we're keeping the imperialism part of the video still in play. And that means that the Cardinals are going to get one of the Rams players. They're going to go ahead and grab Aaron Donald, 99 overall. Very easy choice there to help out that defensive line. All right, so as you guys know, with the Rams being eliminated, the Cardinals are going to be taking their land and i mean it's just that simple that's how imperialism works you guys know how it works i also screwed that up really badly all right guys time for the next wheel spin which team is it going to be landing on which team is going to be making their move next it is going to be landing on the tennessee titans okay so the titans are in prime position actually to grab that 99 overall quarterback so let's see if that's what they're going to do we're going to spin the arrow and see which direction they can go in they might also play a team, but they're actually going to go north, and they are going to get that 99 overall quarterback. They're going to get Marcus Mariota uh, up to a 99 overall. So, I, I mean, that's pretty good for them. Now that they have a 99 overall quarterback, they don't have to worry about that position anymore, which is kind of a big need for them back then. So, this should be able to help them out a lot. And there it is, 99 overall Marcus Mariota. He's got 99 for every single stat now. Uh, obviously the stats that aren't for quarterbacks I wasn't able to edit which I, I don't know why they do it like that but it doesn't matter he's a 99 overall quarterback so this Tennessee Titans team could be serious contenders honestly so let, let's see how that ends up but we're gonna have to spin the wheel once again now to see which team is gonna be landed on next it is going to be landing on the New York the New York Giants it is the New York Giants all right so the New York Giants are surrounded by teams obviously they're, I mean, there's just so many teams around them. It can really go anywhere. They can take on the Patriots, the Eagles, Bills, Steelers, whatever. But let's spin the arrow, see which direction they're going to go in. And they are going to go straight south, which I think is the Jets. So this might be a good New York matchup. The south 
of the New York Giants is the Jets, actually. So we're going to see a good New York battle between the Giants and the Jets. All right, so the two worst teams in the bracket are playing each other, the 31 and the 32 seed. This should be interesting. Let's see it here. Tied game 20 to 20 with a minute left. The Giants do have the ball, and they are in field goal range, actually. Let's see what Eli Manning can do. I forgot that Eli Manning was still on the Giants up to this point. I thought he would have been, like, retired, but I guess not. The Jets are going to use a timeout. Is it really, like, worth it? I mean, I guess. But the Giants are going to drain the clock out pretty much from here, I would imagine. But then again, it's a computer. I don't know what they're going to do. They have Saquon, too. Saquon is, is very agile, so... He has 90 yards and a touchdown so far. So Saquon is putting in that work for them. Here is the field goal to win the game, though. Are they, they did get the snap off. They almost didn't. The Giants are going to win. So the 31 seed knocks off the 32 seed. The two worst teams in the entire game. I didn't even know that until I started making the, like, editing the video. I guess they're the two worst teams. But here is the Giants. Here's their pick. They're going to take Jamal Williams, or Jamal Adams, excuse me, from the jets and it's a great pick for them jamal adams he's young at this time so he's only an 86 overall actually and that is going to be the end of the jets in this video obviously they lost the giants so i'm gonna have to take their territory from them and turn it blue so i know you giants fans are happy about getting new york you guys don't have to worry about the jets being in your way anymore to the jets fans i'm sorry it's just how it works and your team was really bad back then i mean you, you guys got a lot to look forward to so i mean Complain now, I guess. But we are going to be spinning the wheel once again, and this is going to land on, let's see, it's going to be landing on the Patriots. Okay, so the Patriots are one of the higher seeds, I believe, and they can really go anywhere, but they can go west and take on the Giants, but they can also go like north and take on pretty much anybody else. Let's see where the arrow has them going. Uh, they're actually going to be going into the water, I think, and that's not going to be anybody, maybe Connecticut, but really no one to play there all right guys time to spin the wheel once again and see which team is going to land on it is going to be landing on the buffalo bills okay so the bills are located pretty much around teams they're surrounded except for north they have some lakes around them that are blocking them but we're gonna spin the wheel and they're gonna be going north and a little to the east so i don't actually think that's gonna be anybody and it's not so the bill is gonna buy nothing there so let's get back to the wheel and spin once again. Spin the wheel, see which team it is going to be landing on, and it is going to be landing on the the Patriots. Okay, so the Patriots, like earlier, they uh, were they were already landed on, but they don't really have like a whole lot of teams that are surrounding them. And once again, they're just going to be taking land. All right, time to spin the wheel once again and see which team it is going to be landing on. The very next wheel spin is going to be landing on the Chiefs. Okay, so the Chiefs are going to be landed on. Let's see where the Chiefs are going to go. They actually can get a 99 overall defensive lineman if they go straight to the west, but they're also surrounded by the Bears, and they have the Titans near them too. So they technically could be playing those guys. They're going to be going south and a little to the east, and I actually think that's going to hit the Titans. So we're going to see a Chiefs in Tennessee matchup. So the Chiefs are going to be taking on the Titans. The seed number 11 versus the seed number 14. So the Chiefs are uh, expected to win this one pretty much, basically. And they should. But at the end of the day, they didn't. They actually kind of got beat pretty badly. But to be fair, the Chiefs did not have a 99 overall quarterback like the Tennessee Titans did. So the Titans did kind of have the advantage there. He threw for three touchdowns and one interception. Derrick Henry had 103 yards. So... That's definitely going to help out with the Titans and getting them the win. Eric Berry was my choice to move over to the Titans. He's a 96 overall strong safety. How am I supposed to say no to that? He's literally so good. So there's no way I was going to say no to that pickup. As now, the Chiefs have officially lost their land. They actually won the very first Imperialism video I did with Aaron Rodgers. But that is not going to be repeating anymore. So there it goes. The Titans did take the Chiefs land. And let's get to the next one. All right, guys, back to the wheel once again. Let's see what the wheel will land on here for the next wheel spin. We are going to be landing on the Baltimore Ravens. Yes, we are. Okay, so we're landing on the Baltimore Ravens. Let's see where they can go. They can go to. They can go take on the Commanders. They can go take uh, some empty land in the Virginias. They can also go after the Eagles, which may happen. I don't know. 
But let's see where the arrow has them going. The arrow has them going straight south, a little to the west, actually. But that's going to be Virginia. So the Baltimore Ravens are going to get the state of Virginia. There are no power-ups included with the state of Virginia. So um, basically, they're just getting a state which is what it is there's nothing like you can't get punished for getting a state but some of them there's just nothing you can get out of it and one of those states that you get nothing out of is virginia i randomly picked the states by the way when i was adding the power-ups so i don't think that i like intentionally put them like certain areas i literally just did it all randomly and i guess you don't have to believe me but i did it randomly i'm just saying that now so let's get back into this let's spin the wheel once again they landed on the ravens last time what is it going to land on now Let's get this one going. We still have quite a few teams left, and obviously we haven't played a whole lot of games, so that makes sense. But this time it is going to land on the Chicago Bears. Okay, so the Chicago Bears have had some solid success in uh, our imperialism videos. Not really like anything special, but they've been pretty all right. They can really go anywhere. They can go against the Colts, Packers, Vite. They actually can't go against the Vikings. I don't know why I said that. They can also go against the Titans. They're going to go a little northeast. And I think that might hit Indianapolis before it hits Detroit. And actually, there's no way it can hit Detroit. Because if you see, if it if it's north enough, it'll hit the Packers. But I think I'm going to have this go. Indianapolis. Definitely. Indianapolis here. All right, so the 23-seeded Chicago Bears are going to take on the 30-seed Colts. I don't know why the Colts are so bad in this. I guess they were that bad back then. But at the end of the game, it is going to be the Chicago Bears actually falling to the Colts. So that's another upset right there. We haven't seen like any crazy upsets, I guess, but that definitely is one. Adrian Amos is headed to Indianapolis and uh, he, he's not with the Bears anymore. He's going to be joining the Colts there with their uh, dream team, I guess, or their Cinderella story, hopefully. That's what they're hoping, I guess. But um, yeah, the Bears kind of disappointed there. I thought the Bears would definitely do better than that. I kind of hyped them up before they even played too. I said that they had pretty good success in my imperialism videos. And still technically I'm not wrong, but like, come on. You lost a 30-seeded team. There's 32 teams. There's 32 seeds and you lost a 30 seed. What are you doing? Anyways, I'm not a Bears fan. I'm actually a Lions fan, so I could care less. So let's get this going. We got to get back to the wheel, spin it again, and see where we're at. Here we go. Here's the wheel. The wheel is going to be landing on the Falcons yes it is going to be the Atlanta Falcons now the Atlanta Falcons are kind of like in a weird spot because they're like the bridge between the Jaguars and the Titans and Panthers like they're like the bridge between the south and like the middle of America I feel like but they are going to be going south and a little to the west it doesn't really matter uh, they went south so that means they're just going to be playing the Jaguars now the Jaguars are horrible and they're probably one of the lower seeded teams in this game I think, I'm pretty sure, actually, they aren't. They're the fifth seed. So this is going to be the four seed versus the five seed. I forgot the Jaguars were actually pretty solid around this time. But at the end of it, the Jaguars do end up losing. They were the fifth seed. And the fifth seed's gone, guys. That's one of the top five teams that are out. Uh, the Falcons just went crazy. There's no way they were going to lose that game. The Falcons were really good back then, too. I, I'm not sure if this is the year that they went to the Super Bowl. I can't really remember. But these are definitely like this is definitely the time period when both these teams are really good in the AFC. I went ahead and gave uh gave up Jalen Ramsey as he's gonna be heading to Atlanta. I know Falcons fans in real life would really love that. They got Jeff Akuda and they acted like they won the Super Bowl. But hey, Jeff Akuda's solid, I guess, as a Lions fan. You guys can be happy about that. He just gets hurt so much. Anyways, that's not really what this video is about. So the Atlanta Falcons did take out the Jaguars, so there's going to be a lot of red there now, actually, because of the Buccaneers, but hey, is what it is. All right, back to the wheel once again. Let's see which team this is going to be landing on. We just had the Atlanta Falcons. This time, we're going to get the New Orleans Saints. Okay, so the Saints are going to be um, moving here. They can really just pretty much only get land, so they're going to be going north and a little to the west, which actually is going to hit the Texans, so we are going to get a game. Thank God, because the Saints would have just sat there the entire time if we didn't get a game here, because I know that it wouldn't have been landed on, and it would have, it just would have been a mess. So, thankfully, we get a game here. The number six seeded New Orleans Saints are taking on the 21 seed Texans. Now, the Texans have lost every single time, I think, in this. They've lost first round every single time in my imperialism videos, and they're actually not going to this time. They're going to pull off a huge upset. They take out the six seeded Saints as the 21 seed, 
and the Houston Texans are staying alive. They're moving on to the second round of the imperialism video, which is extremely, extremely surprising because I, like every single time I do an imperialism video, they're out first round to the Cowboys. So maybe it was just a change of scenery, I guess, helped them out. Marshawn Lattimore is who I went ahead and gave the Texans. He should be really good and help them out a lot. All right, so here is the updated map with the New Orleans Saints eliminated. All right, we are back to the wheel spin here. Now, let's see what the wheel is going to land on. The wheel is going to be landing on the Carolina Panthers. Now, because the Colts already played, that's why I couldn't um, have the Bengals go. Because, like I said, we're doing this NBA playoff style. So, I have to make sure that I get this right. And I can't have teams play multiple times in the first round. That's not really fair. But the Panthers are going to take on the Ravens, the 19th seeded Panthers, and the 13th seed Ravens. Obviously, I landed on the Ravens earlier, which is why they got Virginia, but I never played a game with them. So you have to play a game in order for it to count, which could end up for a goofy map because at the end, if there's only like two teams left that haven't played at the end of the first round, they'll play each other no matter their location. So like, for example, um, a team in LA could play a team in like Maine, even though there's no teams in Maine, obviously. But let's get back to this game. There's 50 seconds left and it's tied game here with the Panthers looking to score here. They're at least in field goal range. They're actually getting it stopped on fourth down. Six seconds left. Game-winning field goal most likely is good. So the Panthers take the lead, and the Ravens will likely be eliminated here. Now, the Ravens haven't had a lot of success in my imperialism videos, considering they've like they've been so good in real life in the past. But I don't know. Marshall Yonda is the pick here. He is going to be headed to Carolina to help out that offensive line. All right, guys. So the map is now updated. We are going to hit the wheel once again and see which two teams are going to be playing. We're still in the first round of this playoffs. It is going to be landing on the Dallas Cowboys. Now, the Cowboys can't play the Texans. You have to remember that. The Cowboys cannot play the Texans. The Texans have already played their first round game. So, really, they can only take territories. Um, they can get a 99 overall offensive lineman, though, which would be really nice for them. And let's see what the arrow is going to have them go. Straight south, that's not going to be anybody. Actually, I could make an argument. It's the Texans. But like I said, the Texans cannot play. So uh, we're going to be spinning the wheel once again, and we're going to see which team we are going to land on. It is going to be the Raiders. I think it is. Yes, it is. It's going to be the Raiders. Now, the Raiders were in uh, Oakland still at the time, so they go uh, quite a different routes, actually. They're going to go straight to the east, though, and because of that, they are going to get a 99 overall running back. Marshawn Lattimore was the running back back then, so I'm just going to make Marshawn Lattimore a 99 overall. And, uh, yeah, there they go. They got that 99 overall power up. All right, so as you guys can see, 99 overall Marshawn Lynch, 99 everything. He's going to be a beast, unstoppable. We're going to see if that helps the Raiders at all. I don't know if the Raiders were good at the time or what their seed was. I, I don't know any of the seeds off the top of my head. Uh, I only know them if I go to play the games. But here we go. We're spinning the wheel once again. And this time, the wheel is going to be landing on the Pittsburgh Steelers. Now, the Steelers are one of the higher-seeded teams in this game, I think, because Antonio Brown was a cover uh, athlete, and they were pretty good at the time. If I'm if I'm the Steelers, I'm going after Cleveland, getting an easy win real quick in the first round, but hey, I, I'm not the one that decides that. That's the arrow. Let's see what the arrow goes with here. The arrow is going to go straight to the west, actually. So uh, the Steelers are going to be taking on the Browns, so let's do it. All right, so the Steelers were the two-seed. I was right that they were a high seed. The Browns, on the other hand, 27th seed. And they had no chance of beating the Steelers, honestly. Honest, if this was the Browns, like, 2020 COVID year with Baker Mayfield, you know, maybe they, they probably could beat the Steelers. They did that year, actually, in the playoffs. But not this year. The Browns were still so bad. They're just horrible. I, I don't know how the Browns were so bad for so long. And I'm honestly, uh, this is kind of ironic that I was saying that because I'm a Lions fan. So, uh, Joel Batonio is going to be headed to Pittsburgh and uh, help out that offensive line. All right, here is the updated map now after that game. Now let's get back to the wheel once again. We are still in the first round, like I have been saying, but this time we are going to land on the Cincinnati Bengals. They still have yet to play a game. They're kind of screwed. Like all these teams around them have already played a game. So really all they can do is play the Lions at this point. And uh, I, I, I seriously highly doubt that they're going to be able to get an arrow that lands on Detroit here. And uh, it's not. So. All right, guys, here we go back onto the wheel and uh, with another spin here after a very long time of not getting anything, we are going to be getting the Raiders. OK, so hopefully the Raiders are going to take on a team. They can take on the Chargers and the 49ers. They're actually more likely to play the 49ers here, though. Let's see where the arrow has them going. The arrow is going to be going north and a little to the west. 
So that is going to be a game. You're finally getting a game. I probably didn't record the entire time, but there was like probably 20 minutes of me just not getting any games. So uh, we're finally getting one. The 10th seeded Oakland Raiders are taking on the 20 seeded uh, San Francisco 49ers, and it's not going to end well for the 49ers. Um, the 49ers actually got clapped, and uh, Derek Carr threw for six passing touchdowns. I, I think it helps that they have a 99 overall Richard Sherman. He definitely had to have helped out because there's no way you, the Raiders are just doing that. They won 56 to 14. It wasn't even close. It, I don't even know. He had 250 rushing yards and two touchdowns, along with Derek Carr having six passing touchdowns. Yeah, this team is this team's looking legit, which is kind of odd to say because it's Oakland Raiders, but hey, I mean they're getting it done, I guess. All right, here is the updated map with the Oakland Raiders uh, having almost all of California at this point. Uh, obviously the Cardinals have some and so do the Chargers, but we're going to be spinning the wheel again Let's see what we are going to be landing on. We are going to be landing on the Minnesota Vikings Now the Vikings can really only take on the Packers here Both teams haven't played a game yet here in the first round So let's get to the uh, arrow and uh, let's see what they are going to go with All right, here we are with the arrow Let's see where the Vikings are going to be heading The Vikings are going to be going straight west almost a little to the south But hey, they're they're on a direct line straight to Green Bay so the Minnesota Vikings are taking on the Green Bay Packers in an NFC North divisional rival here in the first round of our imperialism video. Both teams were pretty solid back then. The 9 seeded Vikings and the 15 seeded Packer. Let's see which team gets the win. And it, it, it's not it's not going to be the Packers. Okay, so Aaron Rodgers, he, he always does this. I swear in my imperialism videos, he never wins with the Packers. He'll lose and then he'll go to another team and he'll win like every single game. So... The Packers actually kind of got smoked, and uh, it wasn't really close. But Aaron Rodgers, I can't say no to that, guys. He's a 99 overall quarterback. Who else am I supposed to move over? So the Vikings get Aaron Rodgers. Now, Aaron Rodgers, is uh, he's probably going to go off with the Vikings because that's how it works in all my imperialism videos. So we'll see. All right, guys, here we are back on the wheel once again. There's not a whole lot of teams left here in this first round. We're going to land on the Dallas Cowboys. Now, the Cowboys, um, I, if, any, if it was any other like time, or if there was any other location, I wouldn't even be like looking at this. But because the Cowboys are close to that 99 overall power up, they actually got it. So if if there wasn't the power ups, I wouldn't have even looked at them because they can't play the Texans. And um, yeah, it would have been irrelevant pretty much. But basically, they get this offensive lineman at 99 overall. This should help them out. They had a really solid offensive lineman back then, I think. So uh, this should definitely like make that offensive line like offensive line overall just like completely unstoppable. And uh, I I'm just going to make their worst offensive lineman the 99 overall. So then uh, it, it just helps them out like overall. So Leo Collins, I'm putting to a 99 overall. And I think he was their worst overall like rated offensive lineman. So that's why I went with him. And uh, yeah, this offensive line looks really good. We're back on the wheel though. The Cowboys technically haven't played a game yet. So they're still in it. Now the Miami Dolphins, they really can only go like north. So uh, we're going to see. We have to still spin the... Uh, arrow and actually never mind what i did here is i'm actually going to spin the wheel twice and the two teams that it lands on are the two teams that are playing so i'm doing this just to save time because i'm going to be sitting here for hours if i don't do that so the dolphins are going to be playing the patriots and uh the patriots are really good back then obviously three seated patriots and 29 seated dolphins the the final results are what you expected but actually not actually it's not completely what you expected honestly because the dolphins actually did keep it kind of close 22 to 30 not a blowout, honestly, but the Patriots get the win. Not surprising. Rashad Jones is headed to New England. And actually what I'm doing, guys, is I'm pretty sure once I get to the final eight teams, there won't be any like trade swapping or there won't be like team swapping anymore. Once I get to the final eight teams or final four, I'm not 100% sure what which one it was. But basically, there it goes. The New England Patriots are going to take out the Dolphins and they are going to own a little bit of land down very, very south in South Beach, Florida. All right, guys, here we are back on the wheel. Like I said, we're going to spin it twice, and the two teams that lands on are the teams that are going to be playing. So the map can get really funky here. So you got to remember, you got to be able to pay attention. Now, the Cowboys, they got their 99 overall offensive line. And which team is the Cowboys? Which team are the Cowboys going to be playing here? They're going to be taking on the Bengals now. Okay, so uh, Cincinnati and the Cowboys, this should be a pretty solid matchup. And like I said, this, this can get really funky because of uh, things like this where the Cowboys are playing a team all the way in Ohio. All right, the Cowboys are the 7th seed and the Bengals are the 28th seed. Can we get an upset? Uh, no, we can't. It's a 7-point win for the Cowboys. So the Bengals put, in, put up a fight. Uh, Andy Dalton wasn't just, he just wasn't good enough here to uh, help defend the, uh, 
The city of Cincinnati, AJ Green is going to be a Dallas Cowboy. He was a 93 overall in this game and he was really good back then, so uh, pretty easy pick. Here is what the updated map is going to be looking like as we head on over to the wheel. As we are in the final eight teams of this first round, let's get the first team here. Which team is it going to be? We still haven't seen the Lions, uh, my favorite team, but we're going to be getting the Buffalo Bills. Now, which team are the Bills going to be playing? That is the question that we are going to be getting here in a second. As we spin it again, the Bills will be taking on the Seattle Seahawks. Okay, so like I said, this can get really weird. Uh, they're going to be playing almost completely across the country. But hey, it's a part of the, it's a part of the game. What can I say? Uh, the Bills are seated at 26 and the Seahawks are seated at 17. So the Seahawks should get the win. And uh, it, it's not surprising. They were playing at home and it, it was just another, another win for the Seahawks. Just a good win for them. Uh, Bobby Wagner got player of the game, which is kind of interesting but it doesn't really matter Seahawks win 16 to 10 and they are going to take out the Buffalo Bills the Seattle Seahawks are going to get Lee Sean McCoy he was a 90 overall in this game so uh, they don't have Marshawn Lynch either so easy here is the updated map after the Seattle Seahawks and the Buffalo Bills game we are down to our final six teams that are yet to play here in the first round so let's get straight to this let's spin the wheel and uh, let's see which two teams we are going to be landing on. Here we go. It looks like the Buccaneers is going to be close. No, it is going to be the Buccaneers. So which team are the Buccaneers going to be playing? Now, if they play like the Chargers or something, it could get really funky. This map could get really funky. But they are not going to be playing the Chargers. They're going to be playing the Detroit Lions. So this should be pretty interesting. This matchup should be. I think both teams were kind of mid back then. I know the Buccaneers weren't great. Obviously, the Lions, jeez. That's a that's a different subject. So the 24 seed and 22 seed is actually what it is to be exact here. And uh, the Detroit Lions actually with Matt Patricia, um, they're gonna come in and they're gonna actually surprise me, maybe surprise you guys too, but definitely surprise me. The fact that Matt Patricia won a game, yes, Matt Patricia won a game in this imperialism video, uh, probably just because of Matthew Stafford. He probably carried like he always did. Um, I went ahead and gave the Detroit Lions Levante David, 95 overall, right outside linebacker. How can I say no to that? Easy pickup. Here is the updated map after that game, and we are going to get straight to the wheel. We're down to our final four teams. Now, I only have to spin this wheel this one last time in the first round because, uh, yeah. Anyways, it's going to land on the Denver Broncos, and the who are the Broncos going to be playing is the question. The Broncos are going to be playing the philadelphia eagles so, i mean the chargers are going to take on the washington commanders with the eagles and the uh, broncos playing but i have to do i have to spin the wheel again because i have to see which team is away and which team is home and because it lands on the chargers that means that uh the chargers are actually going to be the away team i believe we'll figure that out in a second but here we go final two games of the first round let's get straight into it the very first one though is going to be between the denver broncos and the philadelphia eagles we're actually going to play the commanders versus chargers game first 12 seeded commanders 16 seeded chargers and uh the commanders kind of blew them out of the water almost a 20 point win and uh the chargers philip rivers yeah I, the playoff success for philip rivers just never is there and i guess this is considered playoffs because this is nba playoff version of the madden imperialism so the Chargers take the L here, which means that the Commanders get one of their players. Now, I keep calling them Commanders. They weren't Commanders at the time, obviously. You guys know that. But they are going to get go ahead and grab Keenan Allen, who's a 92 overall wide receiver and should be able to help out that wide receiver room a lot. Obviously, 92 and the next best is 84. That's not very good. So let's go to the final game of the first round. And it's actually the number one seeded Philadelphia Eagles taking on the 18 seeded Denver Broncos. And we are in a close one with uh, about 30 seconds left in the game. The Denver Broncos are looking for the upset, guys. Denver Broncos are looking to upset the number one seed team, but they're not going to. The Philadelphia Eagles get the field goal at the end of the game as the number one seeded team barely holds on to the uh, going up against the 18-seeded Broncos. They didn't even have Peyton Manning at the time, so it's kind of embarrassing. But they, they did what they had to do, and the Eagles are remaining alive. We're not going to see a huge first-round upset. Von Miller, though, is going to be joining the Philadelphia Eagles. Now that is going to be pretty unstoppable, and... 
That defensive line, whew. All right, here is the look of the map after the very first round. We still have two power-ups left. We're down to our final 16 teams. Now we're gonna go back to how we do it normally and uh, where we go with the wheel random team, which is the Tennessee Titans. And then we spin the arrow. We're gonna go back to that way instead of just spinning two random teams. But the Titans are gonna go straight to the east, which is going to be the Carolina Panthers. We have our first game of the second round as the Titans are gonna be heading to Carolina. 14 seeded Tennessee Titans going up against the 19 seeded Carolina Panthers. And uh, honestly, I'm surprised. I, I didn't think the Titans could be stopped. They were the, they were seated higher as it was, but they also have a 99 overall quarterback added in there, and they still lost. I don't know. Maybe it's just the luck of the Tennessee Titans, I guess. But the Carolina Panthers are moving on to round three, which is the Elite Eight. Um, I guess this isn't March Madness edition, so I can't really call it Elite Eight, but... Uh, I'm going to go ahead and give the Carolina Panthers a 99 overall quarterback because he's literally like unstoppable. Even if Cam Newton's an 88, this guy is literally unstoppable. But, yep, they're moving on to the final eight teams. They're moving on to the uh, quarterfinals, I guess it would be. And uh, is it the quarterfinals? Yes, it's the quarterfinals, definitely. As uh, Let's update this map here real quick. Here is a look at the updated map with the Carolina Panthers holding a lot of territory. We are down to our final... Um, 14 teams of this second round because the Carolina Panthers technically aren't involved anymore. It's going to land on the Philadelphia Eagles. The Eagles are pretty much surrounded by teams, so they're going to be almost guaranteed to play a game. They're going to go straight north, which is going to be the New York Giants, which will be probably one of the most lopsided, like, seeded games that we have because I know the Eagles are number one. I can't remember what the Giants are. They're 31, so the number one seeded team versus the number 31 seed. This probably should happen in round one, but... Um, yeah, I, I don't know how. I don't know. Don't ask me. I promise you I didn't rig this. I didn't set this up to be like this. But the 31 seed New York Giants just took out the number one seeded Philadelphia Eagles in a very a, a close game. It was a touchdown, a touchdown difference game. But wow. The Giants get Von Miller and uh, obviously 99 overall outside linebacker. But I cannot believe that the 31 seed took out the number one seed. Here is what the updated map looks like. This is going to be the final 12 teams of the second round, and it's gonna the first team that we're gonna land on is gonna be the Seattle Seahawks. Let's check the arrow. The Seahawks really don't have anywhere to go, do they? They're gonna go straight south, which actually they do because I forgot they did take territory. They're gonna be taking on the Oakland Raiders here. So uh, Marshawn Lynch gets to play his former team. I'm gonna go with the Oakland Raiders because Marshawn Lynch is unstoppable. We saw Derek Carr throw for six passing touchdowns last game for some reason. I don't know why. But we were waiting for a huge upset, and we did get it with that Giants game. We were waiting for that massive upset, so it uh, did surprise me. 10-seeded Oakland Raiders versus 17-seeded Seattle Seahawks. Which team is going to win? And uh, spoiler alert, um, it's not going to be the Seattle Seahawks because Marshawn Lynch and this Oakland Raiders team are insane. Another 250-yard game for Marshawn Lynch. He gets player of the game, obviously, because he's going crazy. The final score is 44-34, and this Raiders offense looks just about unstoppable. They scored over 50 points in the first game, and they scored 44 just now. And you know what? Their defense is getting an improvement. Their offense is so stacked, they don't need anything else. So we're helping their defense by giving them Bobby Wagner. This team is going to be unstoppable. Here is a look at the updated map. As you can see, the Raiders have territories all the way over in Buffalo, New York now, as they almost have the complete West Coast. And... Uh, here we go with the wheel spin. It's going to land on the New England Patriots. We have our final 10 teams, by the way. Let's see where the Patriots are going to be going with the arrow here. The Patriots are going to be going almost straight north. Now, that's going to give them one of these two team, one of these two states, I should say. But we're back to the wheel. Pretty irrelevant pick up there, honestly. But we're going to land on the tennis, the Houston Texans. I was about to say Tennessee Texans. What the heck? Not even a team. But we're landing on the Houston Texans. They're going to go almost north into the west. And the Texans struggle against the Cowboys. Is it going to continue in this episode? They have yet to beat the Cowboys in my Imperialism videos. They're the 21 seed. The Cowboys are the 7 seed. And yeah, it's not going to change here. The Cowboys just completely own the Houston Texans in my videos. They probably do in real life. Actually, I don't know. What's the? Someone tell me in the comment section. What is the history of the Cowboys and Texans games? Who is like... Who wins most of them? I'm assuming it's the Cowboys, but I don't know for sure. J.J. Watt is Houston, is a Dallas Cowboy, I should say, not a Houston Cowboy. That doesn't really make sense. But the Houston Texans are eliminated. They did have, they won the first round. Every single time in my Imperialism videos, they lose first round to the Cowboys. So at least 
they won the first round. All right, here we go. Here's the updated map. Now that the Houston Texans are eliminated, let's get back to the wheel. We are down to the final five teams, I believe. Five or four, four or eight. I meant 10 or eight, my bad. I don't know what I was saying. But let's spin the arrow now after that one. The Detroit Lions are gonna be going west to take on the Minnesota Vikings with Aaron Rodgers now, actually. Aaron Rodgers is a part of that Minnesota Vikings team. 22 seeded Detroit Lions versus a nine seeded Minnesota Vikings. The Vikings have only played NFC North teams. Um, obviously, the Vikings aren't gonna, or the Lions, I should say, are not gonna win every single game, especially with that coach. So the Minnesota Vikings are gonna take out their NFC North rival. Is it gonna happen much this year in real life? I don't know. You guys tell me in the comment section who's gonna win the NFC North this season. 17 to 31 win for the Vikings though, and they're gonna go ahead and grab Levante David. So the Lions weren't even good enough to have their player move on from their team. The Lions had to give up a player that they got from the Buccaneers. That's how bad they were. All right guys, here is the updated map now that the Vikings took out the Detroit Lions. We're down to our final six teams here in the second round. Which teams are gonna be moving on to the final eight teams the elite eight i don't i feel uncomfortable calling it that am i wrong for calling it the elite eight even though it's not march madness uh march madness edition oh what the heck anyways uh it's gonna land on the falcons and the falcons and the cardinals are gonna be playing actually we're done with the arrow for the rest of this round just because there's not enough teams to be doing an arrow and uh both these teams are red so their colors probably aren't gonna change just someone's logo is just getting removed Anyways, the Falcons are the 4 seed. We haven't seen the Cardinals since the very first game of the video. They're the 25 seed, and the Falcons get the win. Are we surprised? No. This Falcons team was really good for some reason. Matt Ryan was crazy. I don't know if this was the year Matt Ryan won MVP, or was an MVP snub, or I, I can't remember. But he was definitely, like, MVP level at this time. They're going to go ahead and get Aaron Donald from the Cardinals. Because if you guys remember, Aaron Dar Donald went from the Rams to the Cardinals because the Cardinals beat the Rams. And, uh, yeah, 99 overall, like, best defensive lineman almost, like, ever in NFL history. So, how can you even say no to that? You can't. So, the Falcons now have territories all the way over in California, in, um, Los Angeles. Los Angeles. Yeah, I guess it was Los Angeles. Anyways, back to the wheel spin. We are going to be getting a New England Patriots matchup. Who are the Patriots going to be playing? The Patriots are going to be, uh, taking on one of these three teams. Now, the Colts don't have a logo. Why are you wondering they don't have a logo? I don't even know, but we're getting a Patriots versus Steelers matchup. These are two of the top teams in the game, and also that means that we get a Commanders and a Colts matchup that we're going to be seeing. Obviously, I have to spin the wheel, see which team is going to get home field advantage, and it is going to be landing on the Indianapolis Colts. That was a very weak spin, by the way, but it is what it is. Uh, we get what we get, right? So the Patriots three-seeded going up against the two-seeded Pittsburgh Steelers to see which team is going to win this game. And uh, the, the the Pittsburgh Steelers, I mean, they were crazy. They were really good at the time. But this is the New England Patriots. Do you guys forget that New England Patriots dynasty? I bet you don't because it's got a lot of people scarred. Anyways, Antonio Brown, 99 overall cover athlete. He's going to be heading to New England. He did it in real life too, but uh, I don't know if we should even talk about that. Uh, Antonio Brown, yeah, he, he's, uh, he's a nutcase for sure. Uh, 30 seeded Colts taking on the 12 seeded Washington Commanders. And uh, yeah, the Colts, your your your, your uh, princess, your Cinderella story run cannot last forever. I'm sorry about that. I don't know why I called it princess. Don't ask questions. I don't know why I did that. 47 to 17. Yeah, they won by 30. This Colts team, you got the first win. You, you won the first round. Be happy about that. But you guys are not moving on to the final eight teams. Adrian Amos, who came from Chicago, went to Indianapolis. He's now heading to Washington to play for the Commanders. Here is the updated map after the second round of play. Now, I don't know if these power-ups are ever going to be used, and uh, they might not be. But here we go. We're down to the final eight teams. We're going to be landing on the Carolina Panthers. So uh, let's go back to the arrow. We're going to be back to the arrow and uh, to find out which direction these teams are going. North and a little to the west is going to be the Carolina Panthers, which is going to be the Washington Commanders. We're going to see the Commanders and the Panthers in a what should be a pretty good matchup, honestly. Both these teams are somewhat even. The 12-seeded Washington Commanders versus the 19-seeded Carolina Panthers. Now remember, the teams that win these are going to the Final Four, and the team that won this is the Washington Commanders. Now I don't know why. I don't know why they're showing uh, Cam Newton. I don't know if like, 
I don't know if they have injuries or not in this. But anyways, since we are down to the final eight teams, we are no longer uh, having teams trade with each other or like move on to the other teams. So the teams are now set for the rest of this. The Washington Commanders are in the final four. All right, guys, here is the updated map. After that game, we are down to the final six teams left here in the uh, Elite Eight. We're going to land on the Atlanta Falcons now. Let's uh, see which direction the Falcons are going to be going. The Falcons are going to be going straight south, a little to the east, actually. And that is going to be the Minnesota Vikings. So we're going to be seeing a good old Atlanta Falcons-Minnesota Vikings matchup. I, I have my money on the Falcons. They've had a, they've had a good run so far. and uh, Aaron, But Aaron Rodgers is on the Vikings, so I don't know. We're going to see here in a second because uh, this should definitely be interesting. The nine-seeded Vikings, four-seeded Falcons. Which team is going to win? And it is going to be the Falcons by three. So Aaron Rodgers really was pushing his uh trying to use his uh i don't know his luck i guess because aaron Rodgers has been always been really good in my imperialism videos but it's not good enough here the number four seed falcons are going to be moving on to the final four and uh they we also have the commanders don't forget them the commanders are in it so those are two of the four teams in the final four all right guys this is what the map is looking like with two of the final spots set up let's see who we are going to be having play next it's the new york giants who are in the elite eight yes i know it's crazy because they are the 31 seeded team let's spin the arrow see which direction the giants are going they're going almost straight west which is going to be the new england patriots Whew. this this is going to be tough giants fans i don't know because you guys did take out the number one seed but this is the two seed so you guys got the hardest path i feel like and at the end of the day um yeah i don't know it doesn't surprise me. The Patriots are going to take out the New the New York Giants, and it's not surprising, but it does suck that it didn't happen because the Giants are the 31 seed. I want to see them in the Final Four, but no, we are going to see the number two seeded New England Patriots. They win by about 18 points, and uh, they did their job, I guess. Uh, they they also had like an easy path. I mean, they had to beat the Pittsburgh Steelers, but yeah. Anyways. The 10 seeded Oakland Raiders are taking on the 7 seeded Cowboys as the Raiders are down by 3 with 30 seconds left. This, is, this blows my mind that the Cowboys scored this much on this Raiders team because this Raiders team is like crazy. Their defense is even stacked. Of course, Derek Carr is an interception. Anyways, Marshawn Lynch had a huge breakout there. They have no timeout, so they have to hurry up. They have less than 20 seconds left. He's going to spike the ball. There's 17 seconds left in this game. The Raiders need to get to field goal range and at least bring this to overtime if they want a chance to be in this final four. Let's see. Derek Carr is looking. He's got all the time in the world. And he throws a... Oh, he almost throws an interception, honestly. That would have been a crusher. Anyways, here we go. Third and 10. Derek Carr is looking over the middle. He finds Cooper. And it doesn't matter because Cooper is still in bounds. They're not going to have time to run up and snap the ball. And the Dallas Cowboys are going to take out the Oakland Raiders in this. I, I had the Raiders winning it, honestly. I thought they would win. They're not going to. Three-point loss for this Oakland Raiders team as the seven-seeded Dallas Cowboys are in the final four. We got the Commanders, the Falcons, the Patriots, and the Cowboys. Not America's favorite teams. I know they say Cowboys are, but I don't know. Here we are, Final Four, the Washington Commanders taking on the Patriots, 3 seed versus 12 seed. Let's see what we can do. The Commanders have to go for an onside kick. They're not going to get it, and the game is going to be over. Yeah. The New England Patriots, the two-seeded Patriots, are headed to the championship game once again. They did win the last Imperialism video that I made. And uh, I was really hoping the Commanders would win this game just because they're the 12th seed. But we're not going to see the 12th seed in the final. We're going to be seeing the New England Patriots head to the championship game. 34 to 31 is the final score. Here we go. Semi-final game number two. Four-seeded Atlanta Falcons. Seven-seed Dallas Cowboys. We are going to be shocked. The Dallas Cowboys beat... The Atlanta Falcons. Now, these two teams in the championship are by no means America's favorite teams anymore. Actually, some of the most hated teams. But Dak Prescott surprises me. Dak Prescott can lead the Dallas Cowboys to a championship here as the Cowboys are going to take on the Patriots. You guys comment down below right now which team you guys want to win this Imperialism video NBA Playoff Edition. Personally, uh, I don't want it to be the Patriots because it's the Patriots. They win everything. They, they won so much during the time. I'm, I'm hoping it's not them. Three-seeded Patriots... I thought there were two. Anyways, seven-seeded Dallas Cowboys. Here we are, championship game. The, Fal the Falcons, oh my gosh. Wrong team. Anyways, the New England Patriots get up 3-0 here. 
in the second quarter, at the beginning of the second quarter. The Dallas Cowboys do come down and score, though, as they are up 7-3 to here as we're heading up to halftime. The Cowboys are able to score once again before half, but the Patriots did drive down the field and kick that field goal, so it's only an 8-point game here now. The Patriots scored. They failed on the 2-point conversion, so they're down by 2. A touchdown by the Cowboys makes it 21-12. We're in the fourth quarter now. Another touchdown by the Dallas Cowboys, but then the Patriots scored. They're only down by 8. We need to see this game. We have to hop in and see what is going on because it is only an eight-point game now here for Tom Brady and the New England Patriots. Two minutes left. Tom Brady needs to get to the end zone. Let's see what he can do. He hands it off to Rex Burkhead, who gets hammered at the line of scrimmage. Absolutely destroyed. They have less than two minutes. They're going hurry up here. Second down and 11 yards to go. Can Tom Brady pull off this crazy win? Here in the championship. If anyone can do it, it's him. He goes to the left side, and that is going to be Allen who drops the ball and actually almost got intercepted. But here we are, third down and 11. This Dallas Cowboys defense needs to step up here as there's just a little bit over a minute and a half left. Brady is back. He's looking. He's going to the end zone, and it's wide open. Rob Gronkowski. Rob Gronkowski is wide open. Oh my god. Dude, what? What are they doing? The, the Cowboys don't even play any defense there whatsoever. They, they just let the Patriots get an easy touchdown. The Patriots need a two-point conversion, though, guys. Wow. I mean, he's obviously in bounds there. He drags the toe. Wow. Rob Gronkowski and Tom Brady, we've seen it so many times in real life, and we see it again here in this video. Let's see what Tom Brady can do here now. Two-point conversion. They get the touchdown. He's looking wide open. Wide open with a slant across the middle. We have a tied game here in the championship. We have a tied game here in the championship with a minute and a half left. What can Dak Prescott do? Dak Prescott needs to drive down the field and score a touchdown. At this time, I, I don't know if he was a rookie, but he was very young at this time. He was still in like his first few years. I know that for a fact. I think he honestly might be a rookie. Anyways, let's see here. Dak Prescott... He's got to lead his team to a championship. Can he do it? He's looking over the middle. Wide opens Cole Beasley for the first down. They just need to get to field goal range. You have to remember, they just need to get to field goal range. Let's see if they can do it. Dak Prescott, can he do it? We know Tom Brady could. Tom Brady was able to clutch up. He hands this off to Zeke. Zeke is breaking free. Zeke almost brought that all the way to the house. He's got 170 yards and two touchdowns. Zeke used to be a beast, especially in Madden. Wow. Okay. This, this is getting crazy. They're at midfield now. He's going deep. He's, oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Jason McCourty. No way. They, they had so much momentum. They were driving down the field fast. And Dak Prescott throws an interception. No way. They had it. Why did they even throw it? Oh, my gosh. This is crazy. Tom Brady has a minute to drive down to field goal range. Can he do it? We're at a tied game here. Brady's looking. Going to, with the screen is White, and he's going to be tackled almost immediately. J.J. Watt coming up and getting that tackle. Dude, what is going on? Tom Brady, and they're not even calling a timeout. They have all three timeouts. They're not calling it. I mean, I guess maybe they just want to bring it to overtime. I don't know, but Brady is looking here. He's going to the right side. Wide open is Antonio Brown. And uh, he's not going to pick up the first down. And I actually, I think they're just going to let this clock run down, which is a very weird strategy. But uh, yeah, that's what they're going to do. We're, we're headed to overtime, guys. We are headed to overtime. They let the clock run out. Bill Belichick isn't their coach, so I don't know. Yeah, Coaching decisions might be questionable with Bill out of the, um, with Bill not having the job. Anyways, here's Dak Prescott for his, a, a chance for redemption here. He can get his redemption. He hands it off to Elliott, who breaks free again. Ezekiel Elliott with another huge carry. He's almost up to uh, almost 200 yards. He's at 180 right now. This is crazy. This is a crazy output by Ezekiel Elliott here today. Let's see. There's five and a half minutes left. Fake the handoff with Dak, who has got all the time in the world. He's going to go. Uh, that was a laser straight to AJ Green. They're in field goal range now. This Dallas Cowboys team might be able to get the win and it could be basically because the Patriots are stupid and they didn't use any timeouts at the end of the game. They didn't even try to get to field goal range. They just let the time run out. I don't know if they were just like hoping with the luck of the coin toss or what. But here we go. Dak Prescott goes to the left side. 
that's going to be incomplete. That was a very questionable throw decision, honestly. He almost threw it. He almost threw it to the other team. He threw it McCordy's way again. I don't know if I would do that anymore the rest of this game. Ezekiel Elliott gets about a yard or two for uh, that carry. Third and nine now, though. At this point, the Cowboys, I don't think they really care. They're in field goal range, so they're just going to run it down. I mean, I guess, never mind. A pitch by Dak, actually. Got two yards out of it. That was weird. I, I don't. I didn't even know they had like that pitch animation in Madden. I guess they do. Fourth down and seven. They're going to definitely kick the field goal. Now, does this win the game? I'm not sure. We're going to see here in a second if he makes it or not, I guess. But here we go. The kick is up, and it is good right down the middle. Does that end the game? Is that a game winner? It doesn't seem like. I don't think it is. All right, so it's not a game winner. We're going to see some more football action here. Let's get straight to this. Here is Tom Brady now. He, he's got to score a touchdown here. I mean, I guess he could kick a field goal and uh, tie the game. But Brady's looking. He's going over the middle. That's almost intercepted. That was really close. Tom Brady is so lucky that he dropped that because that was extremely close there. Look at this. That, that was that, There was two people there that could have intercepted that. Look, he dives, smacks it down, and that guy almost got it too. So that was really close there, Tom Brady. I don't know what you were doing, dude, but uh, that, that definitely was way too close. Here's Hogan here. He hit him across the middle for a, a gain of a little bit. Third and two now. They have, It's a two-down two possession. They can honestly just run it up the middle here and try to get one or two, but they're not. They're going to throw it. They're going to complete that to Julian Edelman. That was a good play design there for the Patriots. They have a little over two minutes left. Let's see what they can do. Here's Tom Brady. He's going to the right side. That is going to be incomplete intended for Julian Edelman. All right, so there's double overtime in this game, I guess. Even though the Cowboys are winning by three, there's still double overtime for some reason. I don't know. Uh, is this a glitch? Can someone tell me this is a glitch? Like, why is this game still going on? I thought the field goal, I thought the field goal would end it, and I thought that the time running out would end it, but I guess not. Anyways, red zone here for the Patriots now. They need to score or kick a field goal or something. They, they're, they're going to make the field goal if they're kicking it from here. But let's see, second down and one, Brady is looking, he's going over the middle, and that is going to be caught by Edelman, who's going to be stopped at the one yard line. Stopped at the one yard line. Just punch it in and they win. 131 yards there for Julian Edelman. Let's see, it. are the Patriots going to get their second ever Imperialism Championship win? Here we go, one yard line. Just punch it in and get the win. Can they do it? Brady's looking to throw it over the middle, and that is caught. Wow, after everything, the Patriots are back-to-back -back imperialism champions on my YouTube channel. After everything. Were the Cowboys snubbed? Like, what were the rules in overtime? How, how did they get two overtime periods, and how did they not win after that field goal? Someone tell me, what, were the Cowboys snubbed here? Because, what was that? Anyways, the New England Patriots did get the win. Uh, that, all that matters at the end of the day is that they did win it. Um, that final score says that's all that matters. J.J. Watt coming from Houston. He wasn't able to get that championship he was looking for. The seven-seeded uh, Dallas Cowboys did make it all the way to the final two teams. So that's impressive enough. The New England Patriots, I think they were two or three seed. I don't know why, but it said three towards the end. I think they were two. They did make it. Not surprised. The Eagles, on the other hand, that number one seed. Now that was surprising. We have a whole lot to change in this map, and I'll be right back. Here we go, guys. Here's the final map. The New England Patriots have the entire thing. Thank you guys for watching, and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace out.